Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mall, and this is part two of my video on using Excel. And I'm going to discuss a couple more uh, techniques that you can use when you're taking a graph and analyzing it with Excel. The first one I'm going to talk about is called the 5% the rule, and we'll see how that's used in just a second. But basically when I look at a graph, sometimes uh, the vertical intercept has a physical meaning. So in the, in the example problem from the last video, uh, I showed that at an age of zero months, uh, this baby had a weight of 7.9 pounds. So the vertical intercept had a meaning. Uh, but sometimes you will have a graph um, and as you plot it, you'll notice that the y-intercept is close to zero. And it may be above or it may be below when I plot it into Excel. And, and it really should be zero. Uh, you think about the situation um, and it makes sense that the y-intercept or the vertical intercept should be zero. And so what we can do is something called the 5% rule test. And the 5% rule test uh, says this. So I'm going to go to my uh, Excel. 5% rule says, if the vertical intercept is approximately less than 5% of the greatest measured y variable value, uh, and you suspect that the vertical intercept should actually be 0, you can ignore the value from Excel as statistically insignificant. So let me show you an example of uh, the 5% rule failing. Okay, you can pause this and, and take, that, take a look at that if you'd like. So when I look at this graph here, and I take my y-intercept, which was 7.9, and I take 7.9, and I divide it by my highest y-value, which was 17. So I pull out my calculator, and I divide 7.9, by 17 times 100 percent and the y-intercept is 46 percent of my greatest y-value. Uh, this is a, a quick way to say that the y-intercept is definitely statistically significant in this uh, in this example. This does not pass the 5 percent rule. That y-intercept is way too large to just have been a fluke uh, to be caused by some instrumental or systematic error. Okay, um, so in a moment I'm going to talk about how we could apply the 5% rule in a different situation. Okay, let's talk about some advanced graphing techniques. So not every graph is going to be linear. So I want to show you a couple of different uh, types of graph and how you may deal with them using Excel. So the first one I'm going to show you, um, I'll give you a hint, it's inverse. So we're going to go to our scatter plot and we get a graph that looks like this. I look at my variation summary and I notice that this looks to me like an inverse function. So I right click and add a trend line and I start going through I display an equation on chart and an R squared value. Linear is not a very good fit. Um, so I start looking at some of the uh, other options and I'm going to ignore exponential. I'm going to ignore logarithmic polynomial 0.98 Looks like a pretty decent fit. Um, power function, 0 0.9965. Uh, and what I want you to take note of is the exponent on this power function. Now the power function is just raising your x variable to some power. Now the power that it raises it to here is negative 0.1, uh, negative 1.008. So if you see anything like this, you'll notice how high the R squared value is. Uh, if you see this negative 1.008, if I have x raised to the negative, anything close to, to the negative 1, we can essentially just round that and say it's x to the minus 1. Um, Excel is giving us an x to the minus 1, which if I had some constant out in front of that, that constant would be over x. It would just be uh, some value over x would be my function. Okay, So this is my inverse variation. Let's go back and take a look at my Excel again. Um, notice here there are no y, there are no vertical intercepts. Uh, this would actually have an asymptote that goes to infinity, uh, and it would never, never actually reach. Uh, I can't draw this. It would never actually reach the um, the axes, just like the uh, down at the bottom. It would never actually reach the uh, y, uh, the x-axis. Those are asymptotic. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, something that we would get from uh, a parabolic. So I'm going to insert another graph here. Um, scatter plot. Okay, so now I see a graph here, um, and it looks like it's an upward, 
up opening parabola, uh, excuse me, side opening parabola. And so I look at linear, no good. I'm going to go to polynomial, let's play my equation. Polynomial has a perfect r squared value. Okay, it's, it's 1. I'm going to hold, I want you to hold that thought. And we're going to go to power function, also has a perfect r squared value. So which one is it? Well, I want you to notice something. When I go to the power function and I look at my power, uh, it's x squared. So basically, this is a, um, a second order polynomial, and there's only one term. There's no vertical intercept. You'll notice that at the end, there's no plus and some number here. And looking at the graph, it looks like it's going to intercept the vertical axis at 0. Um, so that's a perfect fit. Let's take a look at the um, polynomial, which also had a perfect r squared value, very high. And I want you to notice the last two terms. The second term is minus 1 raised to the negative 12. That little e just means times 10 raised to the negative 12. Very, very, very small number. In fact, it's so small we can ignore the second term. And I look at the third term, and that y-intercept, that last term, is also 10 to the negative 12, 6 times 10 to the negative 12, incredibly small. And so when I'm looking at that y-intercept, 6 times 10 to the negative 12, and I compare it to my largest measured y value, which was 2,500, when I take that 6 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by 2,500, it is much, 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 much less than 5%. That means that even though Excel gave me a y-intercept, it actually gave me a value. In this case, we could ignore it. It's statistically insignificant. The y-intercept should be 0. Um, and looking at the second term, it is also so small that we can essentially ignore it. So whenever you see a lot of zeros or 0 .0000, it's likely that that term uh, could be ignored. Okay. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to choose my power function or the po polynomial, and you could ignore those other ones. Uh, this is a perfect um, parabolic relationship. x squared is going to be uh, a parabolic or quadratic relationship where the second terms are basically nothing. So it's just 6.25x squared would be my, uh, my variation. I want to show you another example. Uh, now we're going to look at a square root type variation. So I'm going to insert my scatter plot. Um, this one here, it's, it looks like it might be linear just to start it out, but I'm going to go ahead and add a trend line and see if I see a better fit. So linear, um, 0.97, uh, it has a y-intercept there, and then there's my value. I'm going to go to polynomial, 0.998. Now, when I do polynomial, I may say this is a really good fit. I'd like you to take a look at the first term, 0.0069x squared. This is one of those situations where the first term is so small, it's basically zero. And if that term was zero, then the second term, which actually was a pretty large number, it would be 0.46x plus 2.2. .2. And if that first term is zero, then this turns into y equals mx plus b. It actually turns into a linear relation. So I'm going to go to power. And power has a similar r squared value, but I want you to notice the coefficient. 2 times uh, 2x raised to the 0.4958. So when I look at that x to the 0.4x raised to the 0 0.4958, this is basically x raised to the 0 0.5, or x raised to the 1 half. And knowing what we know about uh, exponents, we're really talking about the square root of x function. And so this would be a, a square root variation. The last one I'd like to show you is the uh, no variation, uh, just so you can kind of see one of these. So if I have something, um, let me just show you. And you may see something that looks like this. And you're like, wow, this is a crazy function. Uh, what, what could it be? I want you to notice what Excel did. It started my y-axis at 1.85. And this is a big, big no-no. In order to properly see what this looks like, we're going to have to unscrunch this graph. When we unscrunch this graph, we want to make sure that each uh, segment of the graph corresponds to the exact same amount. So on the x-axis, it goes 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Every single box represents the exact same number. But when I look at the y-axis, 
uh, that first one, there's this kind of line break situation where you're starting at 1.85, you're not starting at zero. Uh, and so that first 1.85 is actually, you know, we're not going up by the same amount. So what we can do is we can right click, format the axes, and you're going to start at zero. And what that will do is it unscrunches the graph so we can actually see more what's going on. And looking at this here, I'm looking at that variation sheet, and this to me looks like no relation. Uh, it's not really trending uh, up or down. It goes up, it goes down, it's kind of hovering around some value. And if you want to, you can throw in a, I mean, I could throw in a graph on here and add a trend line. Um, it should be pretty straight. Um, so I get a, uh, an equation on here. I'll go ahead and put an R squared on there just for fun. Um, very low R squared value. Um, but even looking at this equation for linear, the first term, 0 0.0029, is basically zero, so there's no slope. And if there's no slope, it's basically just a y-intercept. This is basically y equals two, straight line. Uh, there is no slope. And so this no re relation, my equation would basically just be y equals whatever that vertical intercept is. In this case, it's two, and it could be seconds or meters or whatever the, the thing is. So that's a no variation. Uh, this has been a video, and I hope this has been helpful showing you some advanced techniques for graphing.